This is Deaf Noodles, and this is the day his house of cards fell down. Got mad, he's like, I dropped like $4,000 on this trip, like you need to let me know if you can't come up. Ah! Corey, Corey, chill, Corey, chill. Somebody said the best comedians handle hecklers way better. Uh, so go suck their dick. He made fun of a guy after he cried on stream about his wife's sexual assault. Like some tasteless shit that I've heard and seen on Twitter. I'll explain the context of that critical clip and all of that soon, but it's important you know who Deaf Noodles is. The lore is deep and long and confusing, and every time I put this video it off, it gets longer. The short end of it is, is that uh, Dennis Deaf Noodles is a drama YouTuber with a penchant for lying, or that's how I see it. Over the past few years, Dennis Fatosa has performed on the channel as a character, this being the titular Deaf Noodles, with massive air quotes there being him sarcastically fumbling through drama stories, sometimes getting info wrong in a way that could be seen as causing undue damage to some people. So here Deaf Noodles was getting involved in the wider drama community. Dennis would respond to all the haters by at first calling these things jokes. Every single mistake was a joke. And that anybody saying otherwise was either a Nazi or a fascist. Dennis would end up aligning himself tangentially with Ethan Klein politically and opinion wise and all of this while using a character to shield from critique. However, it was pretty clear the mask was about to slip. So there was a little bit of a status quo for a while while YouTubers in the drama sphere were calling on Dennis out for his lazy reporting, bad jokes, or according to some, being deliberately disingenuous. All right, so here we are. We've learned that Dennis is a bit of a fudger of drama. What's the problem with this diesel? What's so bad about a guy like this? It's just drama. It's not horrendous, it's not Onision, it's not any insane stuff, but there are skeletons in this closet, and we're gonna get to them soon enough. Dennis's style and attitude gave him a quick rise to fame, and who he covered and how he covered it was a quick way for him to make powerful friends and powerful enemies, with the community getting involved to call him out on pretty much everything he was doing at every time. This character, Deaf Noodles, was, according to Dennis, designed to borrow from toxic internet culture. On Twitter though, the Deaf Noodles account wasn't this kind of satirical piece of cutting edge internet humor. It was an account that became a source for real journalists, people with degrees who covered web culture. Deaf Noodles, the character, and the man, Dennis, didn't share same opinions, except they did share the same opinions. And mistakes Dennis made in his reporting, especially on Twitter, would trickle into professionally lazy journalists who ended up reporting what he would say as fact, as him being some news aggregator or insider to the drama sphere or the influencer sphere, when in reality, he was just making it up as he was going along. Or at least from my perspective, that's what I'm seeing. Reporting on real news with real evidence, the only difference is that he adds these stupid catchphrases at the start, such as breaking news that will most definitely change your life or who could have seen this coming. But then he just goes on to read actual news like any news channel would cover. Who could have seen this coming? Austin McBroom from the Ace Family dodges questions about cheating allegations. What's the satire there? Who could have seen this coming? Olivia O'Brien discusses misogyny with Logan Paul. She talks about how it affects women, as well as men. She also calls out her guy friends for the way they talk about women, to which Mike says, that doesn't include me. She responds, sometimes. Again, what's the joke? You just reported the news, but do you think the subject of misogyny and the way men should talk to women is just not important and satire? It just makes zero sense. One of the big characters early on in this story is Kavos, another commentary channel. In his video on Dennis, he coined a term defamation noodles, claiming that Dennis was slandering other creators deliberately. You see, in a prior drama story, Dennis had reported that Dream was involved with drama with an alt-right YouTuber. The YouTuber was most certainly not alt-right. Ironically, the YouTuber was lying and was a piece of shit, and I ended up reporting on it wrong. So again, this is me saying that, you know, I'm always looking to improve and I should always be asking the question, is my source gilding the lily? Anyway, still don't like Dream. 
I just don't want to give the other guy residual clout in this coverage. Regardless, Dennis was targeting creators like that, as well as various other creators, labeling them as alt-right in his reporting, which is completely wrong. This had gone beyond reporting the news. This was basically going after people and labeling them as something that was completely non-political. One of which was Nicholas Theorio, and we'll get to him in a moment, but the two have had a long-standing beef for Dennis's behavior. I should mention that Theorio isn't alt-right either. Anyway, you see, Dennis had this flip-floppy defense to calling people alt-right, saying it was a joke, and then saying that there's truth in every joke, to eventually saying, I'm making a serious statement. I don't want to copy Kavos's video verbatim, so I'll just keep it short. Uh, there was serious news drama with David Dobrik, and Dennis's coverage of this includes a clip that he cuts in a way that seriously changes the context of the information presented, to the point where the clip now presented a different story entirely. Using this is, in my opinion, a doctored quote. Dennis made a joke regarding who David Dobrik was based off of a doctored quote. This is not only a bad joke, but some may even see this joke as presenting factually wrong information, which was the crux of Kavos's argument. Going back to Diorio, the YouTuber I mentioned earlier, he was misrepresented in another clip with Dennis, basically cutting out context to a previous conversation. Again, there's a whole video on this, but Dennis tries to present Nick as someone involved in presenting false statements about deaf noodles. Uh, Dennis was really going up some strong internet debaters here, or, you know, he was just a bad debater, take your pick there. But eventually they did expose him for lying and doubling back a few times, and it made him look really bad. If you're Dennis's friend, you're not news. Nothing you say is news unless it's positive or show promo. If you're Dennis's enemy, well, you're gonna be news even when you haven't done anything. And get ready because everything you've ever said will be used against you to hit bullet points so you can get called out on TikTok. Or he'll just lie about you again to get away with it. He has no respect for the truth and he has no respect for legitimate journalism. But the goal in my eyes with this whole situation with Dennis presenting these clips was to paint these other creators as bad because of either personal vendettas or political motivation. It seems more to be about clapping back and trying to take back the pride that was taken from him with these other people. So, part of why people get mad at Deaf Noodles is this complex. You see, Dennis is somewhat of an expert himself when it comes to comedy. He understands the comedic nuances of essay allegations, the goofy, funny side of political extremism, and he argues that his behavior is okay because of the people in these situations. And this is just based off of his tweets, and I mean, at the end of the day, it's just how I'm interpreting his feelings on the matter. It's the kind of attitude that makes you a little annoyed with how he treats people. It's a holier than thou type of thing that a lot of people can't stand. Hello, Editing Diesel here. I'll be back again in a moment to point something else out, but now I wanna point out um, kind of how Dennis had shielded himself from criticism and then kind of capped that all off by killing off the Deaf Noodles character. So here is the video where that happens, right? The end of Deaf Noodles, not clickbait. And you can see how everybody's like, oh man, you know, like Deaf Noodles, I love, uh, you know, the new direction of channels going. That's epic mealtime, guys. Like, that's, that is <laughs> insane. <laughs> We got more YouTubers, more YouTubers, people with check marks. You got my boy Omni here, looking forward to the next chapter, blah, blah, blah. Um, man, this is like insane how much goodwill there was here at this time in his career from very big and, and you know, there's this people there. They're not nobodies, right? And, you know, there's people that are like, oh, I didn't realize this was a character, right? Oh, I didn't realize this is what was going on, where it's like, oh, Man, that's crazy. I didn't realize that, you know, Deaf Noodles was this thing. So he's kind of passing off all that uh, baggage that the character had developed, the character had developed. And then in the next video, you know, he's himself, you know, and again, you got Epic Mealtime. Epic Mealtime, I guess you're a big fan of Deaf Noodles. Probably not anymore. I can't see Harley being that kind of person. You know, real recognizes real, right? You know, and it's like, people are like, oh, I'm here for less abrasive vibes. Listen, I'll, I'll let the rest of the video tell you whether or not there's abrasive vibes that Dennis gives off. 
I will let you guys decide. Now for clarity, I do make jokes in my reporting too, but I don't make jokes about SA or anything super serious. If anything, I try to make the jokes fit into my videos about something else, give it a bit of levity, a break. You know, so for example, here's a break, my Patreon. Yes, I cover comprehensive news and drama here, and it's about 10 o'clock, and I'm very, very tired. I also try to be good with what I'm doing, so support me if you can. I also have a Twitch, and I uh, paint some figures there. We've, we've been painting a lot of breasts. Unfortunately, we can't talk about the thing that we all enjoy, which is breasts, so I gotta talk about Dennis Deaf Noodles. Deaf Noodles reported false SA allegations as a fact multiple times. A false pedo allegation at James Charles, and feel how you want about James Charles, false allegations are false regardless of how good or bad the person is. He called drama YouTuber Rich Lux alt-right. Now, uh, I should mention that Rich is gay, which, you know, doesn't necessarily align with being alt-right. Uh, Papa Gut, who is a TikToker turned YouTuber streamer person, made a horrible joke that he disavowed multiple times. He had a debate with Dennis in the past, and Dennis used a horrible joke to insinuate he's a pedo based on his looks. Then he used these horrible pictures of Papa Gut, which I mean, Papa Gut's a big guy, big beard, you know. He took these pictures, said that Papa Gut looks like a pedo, and then added the LA FBI. Guess what, guys? Uh, I, I should mention that Dennis sued Keemstar for the exact same thing. I should also say that Papa Gut has made plenty of videos calling out predators or talking about consent, and he has a personal reason for being engaged in that conversation. So, needless to say, this made Dennis look very bad. Dennis also never targets friends in his coverage, which is just poor journalism and, I mean, kind of par for the course. I understand that this is drama coverage, who cares, but if we don't care about the videos we put out, why would professionals ever care? I mean, these days it doesn't really seem like they do care, but regardless of how pedantic and pointless the story, you should be covering it well. Hello, Editing Diesel here, and I was curious what kind of drama content that Deaf Noodles was producing these days to only find out he does do that. And he's doing... I mean, kind of whatever he feels like. His channel... Deaf Noodles fell off. Deaf Noodles fell off. Deaf Noodles fell off. <laughs> The rabbit hole goes so deep with Deaf Noodles that it's personally kind of hard for me to keep up, especially when I'm someone who tries to not always listen to every single piece of drama that comes out of the co commentary sphere. I can't possibly cover all of it here, but these things, in my opinion, are the most dangerous and damning to, you know, potential legitimate and real victims, to good journalism, to internet discourse. Dennis, in my opinion, embodies many of the worst characteristics of creators in drama reporting and internet discourse. In a way, he's much like the satire he claims to be, except, in my opinion, he just is that. He is, for me, a vain person. He is virtue signaling, cowardly, and just plain old up his own ass. But really the chickens have come home to roost when he finally made good on a long time promise of roast battles, which just became something else entirely. Now, Critical covered this and it blew up tenfold. People were already mocking Dennis for a poor show as random nobodies got up in front of Dennis to insult him. This was a terrible show and Critical joking about him was the absolute cherry on top. Now, Dennis has transcended some niche internet drama YouTuber to plain old the subject of drama. I this motherfucker, but he's the only person I've seen with a canko on his neck. <laughs> oh. Oof. I don't know why you're wearing fucking, uh, I don't know why you're wearing uh, shoes to relax, bro. What are you relaxing from? You haven't moved in days. I know you're not coming at me with that fucking neckline of the shirt looking like you fucking stretched that shit for miles. What even is this, bro? Is this like just the oh, You have on a vest in the summertime. <laughs> so, like, you. Now, the second roast battle is where Critical made the whoopsie. Uh, for some reason, Dennis presents these like fights and the main card for that night was Dennis versus Keemstar's employee. This being Salvo, a guy who was le allegedly assaulted by Dennis Steph Noodles, the titular pushed guy. Also, uh, 
he was not an employee of Keemstar's, by the way. They they had some like back and forth beef. Uh, Salvo, to my knowledge, has never worked for Keem. But as of 9, 10, 22, I can tell you that Salvo and Keem are sitting down together and watching American Idol, which is why it's very hard to keep up with this story because the main characters keep doing things and it's hard for me to keep writing and adding onto this script. Now, originally, Charlie presented this as Salvo being an instigator, but as I have shown, this is wrong. Salvo was invited there. He was the main card. I don't want us to lose the plot and rake Charlie over to Coles, though. You know, he apologized and corrected it. It was very quick to do so, and I appreciate that most of us in the commentary drama sphere do. Don't get me wrong, I like Charlie. I do like the guy. This is just my opinion about his content, and he doesn't need you guys, you fans, to tell me to kill myself. He's a Chad. He doesn't need defense. He is impervious. But Critical really does turn on the camera a lot and just say whatever's on his mind. I mean, he gets things wrong a few times. It's just the nature of how he does his content. You know, he doesn't usually correct it, but given that Dennis is such a bad actor, I am very glad that Critical took the time to make a video correcting himself. This is just the downside of Charlie's commentary content. It's really a downside of, you know, prioritizing speed over making sure you're dotting your I's and crossing all your Q's and all that. At the very least, it'll take me a few hours to collect a rough draft, and some stories I do cover actually take months. But luckily, Charlie corrected it. Luckily, this second video was enough to help keep the heat on Deaf Noodles, keep the conversation going and the pressure built. Things were going from watching a crumbling comedic career of a cat-eyed, cat-eared YouTuber to an expose of a, in my opinion, terrible dude. Hi, okay, yes, so I quit my job. Um, if you know who I work for, you know. Um, you probably understand why I quit, but the main thing that pushed me over the edge was Burning Man. So get this, I had to go on a work trip to Burning Man to record a YouTube video. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm assuming my boss is gonna tell me like what I need to bring or like what to prepare for or like anything. I didn't get any details. We, I didn't even want to go in the first place, okay? I was getting bad vibe. I just didn't really want to go. So I asked him like a few days prior. I was like, did you already like buy the tickets or anything? Like it, it just doesn't really go with my schedule. And he like got mad and he's like, I dropped like $4,000 on this trip. Like you need to let me know if you can't come. I was like, okay, like I'll just go, whatever. So I go, we fly to Reno, we get there. Um, we wait like an hour in line for the rental car place. He goes up with an expired driver's license. How are you? I'm sorry, like, well, how did you think you could rent a car with an expired driver's license? So then he's like, you can do it, like me. And they're like, well, the, the person who, like, rents the car has to put their card down. So I had to put my card down, like a $400 charge on my card. Um, and so the rental car was under my, my name. Then we drive to Burning Man, like, three hours. That shit took six hours because he went off-road. He was like, fuck the GPS. I see it over there. Let's just drive straight through the desert. Um, also, I had half a bottle of water with me that entire time. We were in the middle of the desert, no phone service. Um, he just starts going off-road in the rental car, s drives in many ditches. Like, we got stuck at one point. I literally thought I was going to die. And it was, like, so bumpy. My head fucking was, like, hitting the ceiling. I was anxious the entire time. Like, so anxious. It was like literally one of the worst experiences of my life. It was really bad. Um, and then we oh, we finally get to Burning Man um, like five hours later. Um, we pull up. I'm And then I asked him, I'm like, where are we sleeping? He's like, uh, I'm probably not going to sleep because I have a lot of work to do, but you can sleep in the car. Oh, okay. That would have been nice to know. I could have brought like a pillow or something. I literally didn't even bring pants. Like I'm, I'm wearing shorts and a fucking Gap hoodie. Um, and then we get there, we get the tickets and he's like, oh, this is like a rave. I thought it was like a hippie commune thing. How the fuck you just drop 4K on a trip and you don't even know what it is? What? I, I'm like, okay, this guy's not as smart as I thought he was. I didn't even think he was, but I'm like, come on, dude, come on. <laughs> like, be, be fucking for real, okay? Anyways, <laughs> so we get there. They don't sell water there or food. It's like, you literally, it was quick Google search. And I know I could have done it, but it's like, I'm going on a work trip. Like, I didn't think my boss was dumb enough to not fucking tell me any of this shit. Um, but he didn't do a simple Google search, which if you type in Burning Man, you click on the thing. There's a big thing with a survival guide. It tells you that they don't sell food. They don't like buy or sell goods there. That's just how it is. So there was no water. I had half my water bottle from the airport um, and no food. And we were in the middle of the desert and I had to sleep in the car and there was no bathrooms. There was just porta potties and hand sanitizer. And I didn't know that. And it was just fucking horrible. 
This is Tiana, and Tiana is a former employee of Dennis who claims that he not only ran a toxic work environment, but put her through conditions that were unreasonable to say the least. I should also mention that pretty much everything Tiana said is an allegation right now. It's not a confirmation, but Tiana was threatened with legal action for just simply talking about her time working with Dennis. Allegedly, she signed an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, and she has more stories to tell. As a result of pretty much every drama reporter uh, that has been chomping at the bits, just immediately going and asking her for this make or break story, Thank you, Bixby. I love it when you, Bixby. <laughs> Fuck you, Bixby. So everybody's been looking for that titular interview with Tiana. This is a make or break story. And as of 9-8-22, to my knowledge, Tiana hasn't released a video that she is claiming will shed more light on the situation. <sighs> Every time I do this, more stuff keeps happening. I, this is why this video has gotten so disjointed, but I'm trying to make this as comprehensive as possible so you understand who Deaf Noodles is as a person, right? So, the allegation Tiana gave, we're still waiting for that video, the just the whatever that we need to really put everything together, but Tiana did release a conversation with some other individual regarding this Burning Man trip. Basically, they're talking about work and she's venting her fears about her job. She needs to show something else with Dennis to really win a lot of people over. But what is going on with these messages? And personally, for me, I don't think they're faked. There's a lot there, they're very dense, so that's why I'm saying they're not faked. As always, we'll take this with a grain of salt. So basically, Tiana and this other individual named Adrian were discussing how Burning Man is no walk in the park, how it's something you need to prepare for, how the editor quit Dennis's team and how Tiana should have taken that as a sign. Tiana explains how Dennis is driving to get to Burning Man, basically off-roading, off-roading in a car that is a rental, messing this rental up. And according to these messages, the rental was not under Dennis's name, not under the boss's name, but under Tiana's name, because his license was expired. Further info is gonna need to get out there, obviously, but now we have this behavior of Dennis going out of his way and, and really making his employees be in such a difficult situation. This is an insanely uncomfortable place for an employee to be with their boss, having to rent out a car for them. Listen, I didn't tweet at Tiana, but if you do see this and you would like to sit down to an interview or if you wanna share information and keep it confidential for the time being, or you know somebody else who's willing to talk but wants to remain anonymous, just know that I maintain confidentiality with all of my sources. I won't give that up. It's not gonna happen. And of course, you know, safety and health come first for anybody who ends up in a story that like this at all. You should always feel comfortable with who you're talking to. You know, there's good reporters and there's bad ones. And, you know, I'm not saying I'm one of the good ones, but I'd like to hope that I at least try to be better than average. You know, regardless though, I think Tiana does need to speak about this because it, one, sounds like quite a story. And two, I don't think bad bosses should be allowed to get away with mistreating employees, especially with an NDA-based lawsuit being dangled over Tiana's head like a sword of Damocles. Okay, so every time I say I'm done with this, I need to add a little bit more and I need to add a little bit more, right? Now Dennis has had a humongous meltdown on Twitter. Uh, apparently in the time between me starting this script, uh, Dennis was allegedly swatted. He posted this on Twitter. Uh, apparently he's been going into a mad Twitter frenzy. Uh, one can only assume that this is happening because he's looking for attention. Uh, there's been completely baseless claims. These are very baseless and I don't think he is. He doesn't look like the type. Uh, but there's been baseless claims that he's been on a coke bender. There's absolutely no evidence for that, but he does have erratic behavior, which is incredibly odd. Um, in that time, I have learned that Dennis has lied about his age and the guy is pushing 40. <laughs> Most recently, Def Noodles got a stripper to reveal her nipples on a live stream. The stream was taken down and he felt he was wrongfully banned for revealing those things on the internet where they shouldn't be. But don't worry, it's Twitch. I'm sure they'll change their mind. They love those. <laughs> uh, there's also been various full caps tweets about penis and genital sucking. Uh, Dennis claims that his haters be doing that. There's also this wonderful clip that was taken from one of his streams. Somebody said the best comedians handle hecklers way better. Uh, so go suck their dick. Uh, Dennis, this isn't a playground. 
It's my playground. It's whatever the fuck I want. I built all of this from here. I imagined it, and then I built it. I know it seems foreign to a lot of people out there, especially the people who are clipping me. Like, you don't have the power of manifestation of, like, creatively imagining something and bringing it into fruition. This is something I was talking to Steven, like, six, seven months before I even did it. I told him I was trying to get a comedy club and all this shit. So that's what I did. It is my playground. It's whatever the fuck I want it to be. If I decide to tear everything down and build something different, I'll do it. It's my sandbox, my playground, my building, my place, my rules. So, yeah. Man, with all of this stuff, you know, if only there was a website that would catalog and archive the bad behavior of people who are who are not great. <laughs> good thing I cover them. Good, th good thing there's like, people who cover them, right? If uh, I'm just saying a site would probably be like better, you know? Oh boy, okay, so very recently, Dennis held a Twitter space and addressed some of the things for the haters. Uh, this involves an alleged altercation between an alleged heckler and a comedian who goes by the name of Corey, allegedly. Anyway, Dennis claims the following and then I'm gonna play the clip along with Dennis's audio as fuck to come here and then act like a troll like my brother i have security camera footage i saved all of it Corey didn't push anybody okay Corey wouldn't push anybody the time has come okay so that footage that you're seeing right there was released by fitosa and it is to uh disavow Corey of any wrongdoings uh the supposed hecklers were walking away from the camera in this clip as we're following along here the alleged victim is seen here possibly arguing with Corey. salvo is pictured here in footage released online it shows Corey going up to these individuals outside the club after they've been taken out, removed from the venue. The club also has security, by the way. Things escalate fast, but based on the footage, it looks like somebody did indeed push this man. Now we can see the man being pushed with his hands on his face pre-push, so he did not have his hands on anybody else. At least that's what it looks like from this footage. The reason as to why isn't provided, but the man walks in between Salvo and Corey hands on his face still. That's at the beginning of this clip. As the man, Corey and Salvo are walking away from the camera, you can see Corey following close to the hands man. Corey outstretches his arm on the footage and pushes the man towards the black car, or at least that's how it appears at this current point in time. As always, this is to be proven in a court of law, and I'm just seeing what we are all seeing and reporting on it like such. That could have been somebody else's arm, and Corey could be just fine. So it's at about this point, after Keem and Salvo have met up together and are having conversations that I am cutting all this information. Um, check the pinned comment for any updates or even a new video on it because this thing is probably going to continue. But there's one last thing I wanna mention. One last character I don't think we've given enough conversation to. This being the man himself, Salvo. And um, I don't know how I feel about Salvo's intentions. I mean, being frank, part of Salvo's reaching to interview Tiana, an, an ex-girlfriend of Dennis who asked to remain out of this, so I dropped her name from the story, but it was worth the mention. Um, it, it seems like uh, Salvo, I mean, he's obviously looking for a gotcha moment. That is what I see. Uh, that is, again, just my feelings on it, but eh. I could see why he would do that in his position. He's been taken to piss. Salvo's definitely a bit of a troll. It's in his personality. He's looking to get a reaction and get a rise. And boy oh boy, has he gotten a rise out of Deaf Noodles. So let's cover a little bit of that and figure out how Salvo ended up in this room next to Deaf Noodles. Salvo admits he started covering Deaf Noodles and the people around him about a month ago during the whole Papa Gut thing that I mentioned earlier. So let me just play that clip. I was on Deaf Noodles um, about a month ago or, or so. About a month ago or so. Um, I started to make videos about uh, Deaf Noodles and they were about his crew. They were about how he looked. They are about him being, you know, completely, uh, you know, crazy. It was right around the time where he got his Twitter back, where he came, 
where he became, you know, more relevant, you know, to what I was doing here. And I made a tweet back in July. I made a tweet back in uh, July that said, newest target. And it was a picture of Deaf Noodles. It said, newest target. So, you know, I started to watch Deaf Noodles closely. And then right when I started to watch him closely, everybody started to watch him closely because they think that Deaf Noodles made a mistake. They think that, you know, he was wrong about something, which, you know, I didn't even go after him for this because he was right. Deaf Noodles got everybody on his ass because he said Papa Gut looks like a pedophile. He's right. Papa Gut looks like someone that would be a diddler, a fiddler, and a toucher. You know, that's just the truth. So I didn't even go after him for that because, you know, in private and on some of my streams, I go, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are people upset because Dennis said Papa Gut looks like a pedophile? I mean, on YouTube, does anybody look more pedophilic than Papa G? No. I mean, absolutely not. I mean, like, he's literally someone that I would, I would kind of, you know, keep my kids close when I'm around Papa G. I, he's not. Well, I, I don't know if he is. I don't think that he is. There's no proof that he is. But he looks, optically, he looks. So Deaf Noodles, you know, instantly. And, and I mean, the T community, the drama community, the H3 community, the, the commentary bros. They didn't like him calling Papa Gut, saying he looks like a pedo. Now, in reality, they were just looking for anything to uh, go after Deaf Noodles for, you know. It wasn't that he said that. They just didn't like Dennis. They just didn't like what he was doing. They looked right through him. They knew that he was a bad guy. So him, you know, calling Papa Gut someone that they think that they like, um, a P, that was their reason to cancel. And then, and then Dennis handled all that so bad. I started to make YouTube shorts on, on, his, uh, on his people, on Tiana, on Skid Row Steve, you know, really nailing them. So my whole thing with Tiana and Skid Row Steve was that I had three, I had one narrative that I was spinning about Tiana and Skid Row Steve. One, they were poor and Dennis treated them like shit. That, if you look back on my YouTube shorts, I'll play them here soon. If you look back on my YouTube shorts, that's what you'll see. I was calling Skid Row Steve poor, homeless, can't afford food, and Dennis doesn't pay them. I was calling Tiana homeless. She was telling me and telling everybody that she had to eat leftover pizzeria pizzas. She was dressing like a, you know, a homeless woman. That was my whole narrative. Oh, well, what came out this week? That Deaf Noodles treated Tiana terribly, didn't pay them well. They couldn't afford anything, and Dennis was a bad boss. So that's where it all started. I mean, I will say everyone had been waiting for the Dennis screwed up moment. Uh, not to deplatform him, as Dennis claims, but to make sure he isn't taken seriously as a reporter and that he is also seen as a dick in many people's eyes. Uh, from there, Salvo began to make shorts on the staff of Dennis, uh, this being Tiana and Steve. Deaf Noodles' help is to podcast host Tiana and Steven are confirmed dirt poor. The food that the restaurants are going to throw out at the end of the night, like, you pay, like, I pay, like, $6 for this, like, pizza place, and... There's little Tiana going to a pizza place and eating the old crust and pepperoni for $5. Here is the other help on the podcast Steven Marcus referred. Go in, they keep criminalizing the poor. I'm gonna be locked up for real. Confirming, he's poor. Kinda silly that he needed to even tell us that he's poor considering how he is dressing. Dingy shoes, pants, socks, jacket, and a shitty little polo. Is Deaf Noodles even paying his help? I mean, Deaf is a confirmed 38 year old man. And his two co-hosts are hungry and can barely afford clean clothes. Keeping stuff simple, you know, Salvo stream sniped Dennis's roast and this all ends up peaking in that faithful night where Salvo pancakes, the pancake himself, ends up there. And listen, okay, I, I've noticed that a lot of people find Salvo funny and he clearly isn't taking much of this very seriously, 
personally, the comedy, it's not for me, right? In my opinion, he kind of seems like a dick. He's also clearly taking the piss. It's just not for me. It's not what I'm about. But if it's what you like, fine. And I'm sure Salvo has choice words on that. It's just, it's just not for me. You know, the thing is, is that Dennis has done nothing but garner ill will from everybody in the community. And even more than that, and he's just done a very poor job of carrying himself and, and doing anything. Right now, Dennis is continuing to hold his comedy stuff, though he doesn't like any cameras being in there. He doesn't want any whoopsie moments like the Salvo moment to happen. At least that's just what I see. He might have a different reason for that, but that's just my opinion on the matter. I've been very careful with that in this video. I don't know if you've noticed, but that's where things stand now. And um, what happens next is anyone's guess. Please, if you'd like, to uh, tell me if you worked for Def Noodles, if you know anything else, feel free to shoot me a DM over on Twitter. Again, I'm not gonna fucking rat you out. I just, you know, I understand a lot of people are very scared of people like Dennis because Dennis has money to throw around in the legal court system, you know, so I get it. But yeah, that's where everything stands now. Take care, be well. If you're watching this right now, I am live and I am currently painting uh, this thick dyed barbarian. Um, cause I, I paint. <laughs> Take care guys.